Hello everyone. Welcome back to Rust Programming Tutorials. Today we are going to talk about how Rust is an object-oriented programming language, or rather how encapsulation is there done in Rust, how polymorphism is there uh, done in Rust, what about inheritance in Rust. So today we are going to learn about these concepts and how they are implemented in Rust. So like any, well, not like any other programming language, object-oriented programming are made up of objects. What is an object? It's, a, it's an entity which is a collection of related fields and some operations, some functions, behaviors that we can define on the fields, right? Say, for example, uh, a circle. A circle can have, um, or rather, let's say, a shape, right? A shape can be a circle, shape can have dimensions, its type, right? And different operations that can be done uh, on, on the shape, like compute the area, compute the height, compute the width, compute the volume, anything can be done, right? So those are actions that can be performed using the fields. Now, Rust is object-oriented, like struts and enums have data, and impl blocks provide implementation on the struts and enums, right? Even though they're not called as objects, they still provide the same functionality. Now, what is encapsulation? Means the implementation details of the object aren't accessible to code outside the object. So if, uh, let's say here, see, list and average. Say, for example, list uh, and average are <clears throat> two fields of averaged collection, list of type vector, int vector, averages, float 64, now, average, this is an implementation which is provided wherein you can access these two fields using add, remove, okay, or any other method that you want to do. So this is how you do it. Pub means public, function, function name. Now notice the first argument is a mutatable self, a reference to a mutable self because what are you doing? You are updating the value. See list, you are adding to a list, you are updating the average. Here you are, you can provide a pop function here too, right? Self dot, li oh, no, list, pop is part of the list function which is there. You pop some value, you do average, right? So this is how one of the ways it's implemented. Like you have a strut and you implement it's uh, you implement and provide the functionality. Inheritance. Now, inheritance is like you inherit features or fields or public methods from the parent class. Now, in Rust, there is Rust does not support the traditional way of inheritance if without using a macro. So there is no way you can say a parent strut and a child strut. Polymorphism. Polymorphism is what? One object taking different forms and it is based on the runtime implementation. Okay, so when we are talking about, let's say, shape, what would be polymorphism? Runtime implementation, whether it would decide whether it's a circle, it's a square, it's a rectangle, or it's a triangle. These are all polymorphism, different forms of shape, right? Like see, for example, here, there is a trait. Trait is just nothing but just like an interface, which defines one function, draw, and different implementation. So for circle, for square, and for image. So these are the runtime implementation, and each will have its own way. Like how would you draw a circle? How would you draw a square? How would you draw an image? So polymorphism, a drawable, different things that are drawable. 
So this is how polymorphism is implemented in Rust. And then you can have a function which takes this drawable and then it calls the draw. So depending upon what instance you're passing, it will call the draw method of that particular implementation. So that was it. Pretty short video showing how Strut supports object-oriented programming concepts. All right. Thank you all for your time. See you all again in the next lecture. Thank you.